Now, fresh off of his triple uh, seven, we're going to hear about the new Pipistrel E Textron Aviation from Troy Wheeler. Test. All right, there we are. All right, guys. Well, I've been asked to talk about Pipistrel, but I've got one thing I want to talk about. It's kind of a personal testimony for myself. This year celebrates 20 years as a partner with King Schools and Textron Aviation. So, quite frankly, without these guys' input, that I've been to a number of their CPC conferences over the years, and I know there's a number of us out here who's listened to their inspiration to how to not to be only a good flight school, but an entrepreneur and a good business person. So I have to commend you guys, really, on my personal success to the King Schools and everything you've done for me over the last 20 years. So I give you a lot of credit, guys. I really do. <clears throat> Textron, we started out with a new Skyhawk back 20 years ago, one Skyhawk. Uh, they delivered it to us $500 down, those who may remember this, and no payments for three months. And that's what got me started. Today we have 15 airplanes, we have four citations. Uh, we're quite busy with our school. We have a 145 repair station. So I have to give it to Shane for coming back around and says, hey Troy, we just bought Pipistrel. Are you interested in representing the product? So I said, okay, why not? So I flew over to Slovenia. I wanted to see what I was getting myself into. Obviously Textron thought enough of this whole uh, Pipistrel glider electric market that uh, it was important enough for them to give him Evo, which started the company 30 something years ago, 200 plus million dollars. So I flew over, went to the factory, met the people, and I saw, you know what, these guys are inspired, they've got great quality, they've got a good workforce, and I bought in. So I came back, I signed a contract, they gave me the Southeast, Frank up in Lincoln Park had the Northeast, and then I want to introduce Jason, who's going to be this area, Jason Talley, uh, he's going to be the distributor for the uh, West Coast, uh, also Grayson here, he's my key guy, everybody needs a Grayson, he's my kid that can help figure out pretty much anything, uh, he helps me with sales, charter, you name it. Cole Don, who's with me, also part of my team. He, uh, he's getting ready to be a DPE, so he's our chief flight instructor, and he's finished through phase one, and now he's gonna be starting into phase two to become a DPE. And I got Lori, she's my controller. As any small business knows, you wanna make sure you got more money coming in than you got going out. So she helps, helps me with all that. But anyway, without shooting any more crap, just wanted to let you know that I'm, thank you for giving me the opportunity and thank you, Martha and John, for everything you've done. You got a good one with Brian. We've been following Brian with Liberty. Obviously, he's uh, gonna be a good business development guy for you guys and, and we've been a part of the Liberty program for a while now and it, it's worked out for everybody. But anyway, here's Pipistrill. It's the dawn of a revolution. that's broadening horizons. It's a smarter future of steadfast innovation and sustainability for all. And it is light, efficient, Precise, beautiful, sustainable, and powerful. Welcome to Pipistro by Textron E Aviation. So it gave me goosebumps anyway watching it when I bought in. You know, Textron got involved in this. Uh, we've got a new presence. Chief Executive, Kriya Short, she came from customer service. It was Rob Scholl. Um, Kriya was just appointed in the last couple of weeks. 
So those of you who have been around Textron, she's been around for a long time, so we're excited about having her part of the program. Gabe over there, he's the CEO of the President of Managed Department. Steve was a longtime Textron guy. And then Evo there on the end, he was the, he was the founder of Pipistrel. Started out in his garage making hang gliders, and he worked in the light sports stuff. And he's an incredible visionary and started in his backyard on a little grass strip in, in Slovenia. And he used to fly at night, and actually the Pipistrel name comes from bat. And so he would fly at night, and they knew it was him flying when he wasn't supposed to be flying. So if you ever look any further into it, it's a credible story about the guy. And he's sort of still involved, but uh, he's passed the reins on to Textron to take it to the next level. So there's a factory in uh, Slovenia, uh, which is... The, where the main headquarters started, and then Italy is actually where the factory is. And I've been to both locations, so they're within, you're leaving one Italy to go to Slovenia, but it's really only about a 30 minute drive across the border, and nobody checks anything, so you might as well think you're leaving Texas and going to Oklahoma. So it's not, so it's not a problem. Um, the factory was clean. I was very impressed when I was over there. The, the people there, I, I do think they have a labor advantage. Uh, they don't have unions, they got people that really want to work and want to be there. So I think, you know, the, the manufacturing will stay in Slovenia and Italy for the time being because, you know, that's where they have an advantage. Um, the Vertical Solutions, that's the main headquarters. Uh, it was pretty impressive. Evo bought that place and I got to see all this. Actually, I made two trips over there. I went back and um, I wanted to meet the team, the certification teams. Jason's actually made a trip over there because we've made a commitment. We've ordered some airplanes. Um, we really, you know, wanted to see what we were getting into. Basically, uh, we make an order from one of your uh, one of the distributors. It's built at the factory. It's loaded on a container. We've already delivered uh, half a dozen airplanes. We put them together, and that's why the distributors are actually bringing them into the country, into the U.S. We put the wings on them. They're pretty. They've already test flown over there. We put the wings on them, we get the DAR to come out, give them the airworthiness certificate, and we send them on their way. And everything that we've seen so far has been very impressive. We just, so we're hoping it'll do well. They put them on a ship, they come to our facility where we put them together. We've actually gone through some training already. Slovenia Pipistrel sent over a team of mechanics over here. It's been 11 days with our guys going over the airplane because we want to be able to support it. One thing I got used to with Cessna was the support. So we're hoping that Textron brings the same level of support that we all expected, and that's why I bought in, was, all right, Textron's got this thing. Let's hopefully we can get the support. There is a little bit of a time lag. They're six hours in front of us over there, so they're going to bed when we're getting up. You know? So if we send them an email at you know, 9 o'clock in the morning, they're going home. and We may not hear from them the next morning. So we're hoping to streamline that and get that better. Got uh, three of us now. I got Frank up in uh, Lincoln Park. He was a longtime sales guy for Cessna. He actually kind of was the uh, front runner of this. He's already put together most of Mesa's airplanes. Mesa ordered over 100 airplanes that are coming over here for their pilot mentor program. So we think uh, he's got a head start. Myself, yeah, I'm still with American for another three months unless they throw me a Hail Mary and let me fly till. 67, which I hope they do, but anyway. And then we got Jason there at our table there. He's got, uh, he started a number of businesses out here on the West Coast. Uh, he flies one of these guys too. He's got a CJ2 Plus. So we're all very much in love with the Textron products and we hope to continue to do that with Pipstro. So a couple of the products that really have piqued my interest. And I'm not sure how it would be accepted in the flight school arena, but the sinus here is a motor glider. And to me, this could be, you know, a really game changer for the flight schools. You can have one of these in your flight school and solo a guy at 14 years old. He can get his license at 16. So I think you really get a head start with the high schools and Let's face it, it's a self-launching glider. Most people aren't got kind of aware of that. When you think of a glider, you think of being towed up to 10,000 feet, turn them loose, and hopefully they get home. 
Well, this one actually, you know you're gonna get home because you've got a nice Rotex engine, you got a Garmin Autopilot, you got a G5. So we think that putting them in a flight school, it, you're gonna get them early. You can also fly this thing when you get older and you can't have a medical. So you could actually sell them their first and their last airplane. Uh, you can fly it, you can use it just like as an airplane. Uh, Grayson and I are working on getting our glider. Problem is, none of your instructors have glider ratings. So we're all trying to get our glider ratings right now. We flew the other day, we took this one up, we've been signed off, we gotta go do our check rides. But it was kind of cool, we were at 3,500 feet, over the airport, shut the engine off, feathered the prop, and we dead sticked it into the 1,000 foot markers. Made me think, engines are kind of cheating, you know? So what better skills do you have to show a brand new pilot? If he can fly, you know, like we saw Josh earlier, he dead sticked it in from 15,000 feet, you know, God bless him, and I was, quite impressed by that whole, whole ordeal. But I think getting a head start with the, with the glider could be a big head start for flight schools. <coughs> the Alpha Trainer is what we're trying to work into the Cessna Pilot Center program. Uh, we've been working with Shane and Chris Crow for the Alpha Trainer to be a qualifying aircraft for the Cessna Pilot Centers. We all know what a new Skyhawk runs and we can't get one until, he's been a great sales guy, he can't get one until 2026. So we think this will be a great alternative for a flight school. So we've got some coming, we're anxious to get them in our flight school. We're trying to work out with King to get them in, their, get in the program, because we just know that's gonna be a huge advantage if we can use the Alpha Trainer in a flight school. This one comes with a Garmin Autopilot, comes with a G3 Touch. Uh, you can actually train and check for the instrument rating, you know, those of you who had sky catchers, we know that was the problem for us that we couldn't do instrument training in the sky catcher because you couldn't get green needles. There was no way, this one you can. So this one has all the equipment to train and check, you just can't stick it in the clouds. So there is a difference there. So as long as the examiner is willing to do the check ride in the, in the alpha, we think you could go all the way through your commercial training with the alpha trainer and the cost of ownership is gonna be, you know, a fraction of what another aircraft might be. So we think the Alpha could be a big player and we're looking forward to getting that in all the flight schools. Yep, as I said, trying to get involved with the uh, Test of Pilot Centers. This is where I learned most of my stuff from, King, from the Kings and Roger Sharp and his group over the years. We just learned a lot. They said Mesa's ordered a hundred of these things that they're using in their pilot mentor program. They're flying them all over the place, helping their guys build up time. So it'll, we'll see if it handles the, the test of that type of environment. But uh, so far they're flying them like 20 hours a day and everything that we're hearing back from them are good reports. Some of the things with Mosaic, we're all kind of keeping a close eye on that, you know, with the rule changes, uh, with the increased weight, the increased speed, variable pitch prop. Uh, we think that some of the products that Pipstrill has coming down the pipe that don't fit the criteria now will. Um, the Explorer is one of the airplanes that are uh, being built over there. I mean, it's a, it's a two seat little hot rod. Unfortunately, it goes too fast and it has a variable pitch prop. So it doesn't fall into the light sport category. So the whole mosaic, those of you who are keeping up with it, that could be a game changer for the uh, flight school industry. And if you haven't been watching it, they're in the comment period right now to what, how that's gonna look out. I think ultimately at the end of the day, you know, the stall speed's gonna be the, the restriction. They say, well, 250 knots, well, still got a stall at 54. So if it stalls anywhere above 54, it would be excluded. So that's kind of the, the benchmark for the whole rule changes. <clears throat> anyway.
So we all know, we kind of wonder what Textron wanted to do with this thing. It's the electric airplane, obviously. And we think, it, you know, once they get the battery life, just like anything, a Tesla's everybody else, you know, the battery life is obviously going to be the, the restriction. Right now, you can fly it for about 50 minutes and you got to recharge it. So the idea is they work the local pattern, basic airmanship, takeoffs and landings, come back, recharge it, go again. So those are already approved in Europe. They think right now we're close to getting an exemption in the States for electric. Right now, under the current LSA rules, you have to have a piston propulsion, and so electric doesn't apply. So supposedly, even before Mosaic comes out, they think they're going to get an exemption for the electric airplane. We all know it's probably early, but somebody's got to get started, and at some point, you know, electric is going to come into the, into the game as they improve the battery life of the airplanes. I actually got to fly it uh, when I went over there. I think Jason got to fly it also. We gave the uh, auction one off at uh, those who went to uh, uh, Oshkosh. Thank you. Um, they auctioned one off at the EAA. They actually donated one for EAA, and it, uh, we went to that event, and it was, it was great. They uh, auctioned one off. So they believe in it. Obviously, the the world believes in electric propulsion at some point. It was kind of cool. You sat there on the runway and the prop stopped. I'm like, okay. And then you gave it gas and the prop kept going and off we went. And it was quiet, no headsets. It was pretty impressive, you know. So it's coming, whether we agree with it or not. But, you know, it, it, it is the day, wave of the future. <clears throat> so one other type of airplane that we think is going to be, will do well here is the Explorer. It's approved already in Europe. But like I was saying earlier, I mean, it's a great panel. It's got Garmin, autopilot, 130-something knots on, you know, a couple of gallons an hour. And it's got a good useful load. It's got a parachute. The problem right now is it doesn't fall under the LSA category because it's too fast. It is approved in Europe, but if the mosaic rules change, this could be a major player, and it's going to be competitive. I know everybody out there has got something in the, in the background working for mosaic rules changes, but they'll be positioning themselves well for whatever changes going forward are. So we think, I flew the Explorer, and it was quite impressive. It's actually spin approved. You can actually go up and spin it. Then the Panthera, we think that's a hot ride. We think that's going to fall in between a DA-40 and an SR-22. I mean, it's a hot rod. I've got one in my store right now that we're doing demos in it, and it's, it's a hoot. I mean, it's, it's a straight connect. Almost, it flies as well or better than the, the TTX or the Columbia 400. But those who flew that, it's a real stick right between your legs, 190 knots on about 12 gallons an hour, and parachute. So we think it fits a need. They're working on certification right now. They're hoping for Europe certification next year, followed by... U.S. certification probably in 25 now that Textron, it's, it's been flying for 10 years. I mean, he's been trying to get it certified, but now that Textron's got the airplane, we feel like it's got, you know, a great opportunity to get finally certified. So it's an exciting airplane. It's sleek. It's nothing else like it. It's retract, trailing gear, and it's, I got about 12 hours in it now, and I'm pretty impressed with the speed and efficiency of the aircraft. Anyway, talked about the distributors, Element over here on the West Coast. We're down in the Southeast, and then Lincoln Park's up in the, uh, up in the Northeast, and we're here to get the airplane out, give the support. They really didn't have a really good distribution network when Pipstrel had their own dealers. One of the things that, uh, uh, when Shane came to me, he says, we're trying to get in the U.S. market, and we're looking for some good guys to help support the product. So we're excited about it. We bought in, and we hope everybody else does too. I tell everybody, Chick-fil-A will tell you when you need another store. So we'll, the market will tell us how the airplane does, you know, just like the Skyhawk and everything else. Right on that, that's it. Hope you, hope, I wish we had one here. The produ product is uh, slow like everything else right now, production, but it's coming. We got two that got put on a boat yesterday that will be at our place uh, in the middle of October. It takes about four weeks to ship them but they're doing as best they can. They're running about two months behind, but uh, we're hoping that Textron put some of their horsepower behind it and able to increase production.